time. Hang on to your hats or for those of you with satellite dishes, uh, your toques, because it's time for the beginning of the start of the Red Green Show with a lot of regulars and a couple of occasionals, but mostly featuring a man who spends a lot of times outdoors. Well, with, with very good reason. So please welcome the star of the Red Green Show and my uncle, if I might inject a personal note at this time, Mr. Red Green. Thank you very much, thank you, Harold, and uh, welcome to the show, and especially thank you for tuning us in, because without you, I'd, I'd just be talking to a wall, uh, which reminds me of a story. Uh, you know, uh, last weekend up at the lodge, uh, Stinky Peterson was doing everything in his power to try to get uh, old man Sedgwick's goat, uh, not realizing that Sedgwick had given the goat away to, to help settle a card game dispute that involved a deck with seven aces in it. Excuse me, Uncle Red? Um, well... As your producer, director, uh, slash uh, concerned nephew, it just behooves me at this time to mention that the story you are articulating somewhat is a, a yawner, actually, a slash side issue of this particularly important juncture in the program. Oh, really, Harold? So what do you suggest? Well, I just, I was wondering if uh, many of the viewers have noticed this piece of equipment hanging around my neck, slash throat. It is a, an electronic um, effects machine that enables me to do this. <laughs> So I can go to a more interesting segment, which, you know, has every opportunity and possibility. Oh, well, this is my show, uh, Harold, and uh, we won't go to the next uh, segment until I say so. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, sure, right. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I misunderstood. <laughs> Women. I've danced with old men. I've watered my horse again and again and again and again and again. I've rode in new cars. I've driven old trucks. But none can compare to the thrill of shooting ducks. Shooting ducks! Shooting ducks! Blast them out of the sky. Blow them to mince meat in the wink of an eye. I love shooting ducks from deep in the blind but if I ever actually hit one I'd likely change my mind <laughs> this week uh, in the handyman corner uh, we're going to show you some imaginative and uh, some creative and even to a certain sense uh, thoughtful uh, things you can do with a garage uh, door opener. Now, a uh, garage door opener is a, is a handy piece of equipment, but the thing that it does worst is open garage doors. Because rather than just uh, take it and uh, throw it in the lake, uh, what you should do is use your imagination and think of some other uh, applications of the garage door opener. For example, here uh, I've hooked up the garage door opener to uh, the uh, door of the uh, I guess that's a stove, really, is what it is. And uh, just imagine now that I'm sitting in my living room uh, watching a football game on television, and uh, I've got uh, something in the oven, so to speak, uh, maybe a turkey or a roast beef or a raccoon or something. And uh, I want to check on the dinner, but I don't want to miss the game. With the garage door opener, I can uh, I can just stay back, and I've got the binoculars to kind of check on how the dinner's going. So I'll just show you how it works. I just hit this like this, and uh, I said, wow, well, I wonder how the dinner's doing. <laughs> Not ready yet. <laughs> so all I gotta do then is just turn the unit off. Just uh, turn the just turn this unit off. And you know, well, uh, I guess maybe it is dinner time. Well, I'm, uh, I'm getting hungry. And uh, tie on the old feet bag, I guess. Oh, how many of you have dreamed about having your own uh, personal uh, elevator right inside your home? You can do it uh, just like I've done here. I, I mounted the garage uh, door opener uh, with the chain going up uh, through a pulley situation, and then it uh, hooks onto a rope and comes down to my uh, basket cage or uh, elevator uh, enclosure, whatever you want to call that. So uh, when I want to go up to, say, the second floor, uh, do whatever it is that I do on the second floor, uh, all I have to do is just uh, aim the garage door opener, the button, and uh, I start to... <clears throat> I start to... <laughs> Obviously, I have to bolt uh, the opener to the floor. 
uh, because I guess I weigh, well, of course, I weigh more than, well, uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, we all get the idea anyway. <laughs> Uh, it, it can work, and uh, a lot of other ideas. You're only limited by your own uh, imagination. So until next time, remember, uh, if the women uh, don't find you handsome, they should at least uh, find you handy. <laughs>
Just knowing she's there is comforting, though. I wonder what her real name is. Wouldn't be too much of a coincidence if it was Samantha. Huh? <laughs> uh, uh, Ranger Gordon, that's a log. <laughs> well, I can see the window, and, and it looks a bit like a woman, but uh, that's a log. It's not. It's a woman. Uh, no, it's a log. Take a look yourself. I'm in love with a fallen log. <laughs> Hey, listen, really good to see you again, eh? Come on, stick around for a bit. Well, uh, maybe, maybe another time we'll stay over, okay? But not this time. Well, come on, I was going to have a big barbecue. I got I got canned corn, yep. and I got some beans for a special occasion. I was going to invite Samantha over. <laughs> I guess there's no point in inviting Samantha over now, is there? Well, not unless you need firewood. Shut up! <laughs> there are many fine hobbies a person can do. Like collecting things you find on your shoe. <laughs> Walking on bees, dancing with sheep. <laughs> but uh, guys and me, we like to sleep. Sleep, sleep through the night, all night. Sleep half the day. Lie back and sleep your whole life away. <laughs> Up in the bunkhouse, snoring and worse. But the best sleep of all is the ride in the herd. <laughs> oh, Uncle Red, perfect. This is great. It's mailbag time, okay? So you choose the green chair because I've already chosen the white chair. And I have a letter here. I'll read it out loud and you can answer it, right? Because that's what we do on every segment. We should continue with that. I mean, if it's convenient with you. Just read the letter, Harold, would you? Okay, all right. That's, that's good. That's a yes. Okay. <laughs> Dear Red, ever since my husband retired, he's been hanging around the house, getting on my nerves. He shuffles around at odds, complaining and grousing. It's driving me nuts. I can't take much more of this. Is there any hope for me? Well, Harold, uh, this is something we've heard before where a fellow retires and just really can't find enough to do. Uh, what this woman has to do is to find a hobby for her husband, you know, something to keep him kind of interested and occupied. I suggest uh, watching television. <laughs> it's education, it's entertaining, and uh, he can do it uh, day and night, uh, even when even when they have guests over. Yeah, but Uncle Red is... Not much of a social activity, really, is it? I mean, watching TV is okay every now and then, but it's really not a hobby. Not like, you know, like stamp collecting or making cabinets or producing music videos for new wave bands. You know, something creative like that. Don't you think that'd be a better suggestion at this juncture in time, don't you think? Well, uh, all right, Harold. Uh, I did uh, hear this one fella that uh, when he retired, he did something he'd want to do his whole life, which is, uh, which is uh, carving statues out of wood with a chainsaw. Uh, I got him outdoors, uh, and uh, he would be carving them out of those uh, big tree trunks, you know, so he was getting his fresh air, and that was a creative thing. And uh, plus, uh, carrying around a 40-pound chainsaw really keeps the old ticker in shape. 40 pounds? Well, you need uh, the, the saw with the six-foot blade on there to cut through the heavier woods. Yeah, but you can't even lift one of those. Well, uh, that doesn't matter. I'm not retired yet. <laughs> no, he would just carve uh, strictly uh, catfish. But you could do uh, insects or uh, even uh, children with the large, sad eyes. Well, I bet you there's a good market for that, too. A real huge market. I bet you that's what's happening. I bet you that's. I bet you there is. That's what I think. I bet you. Uh, well, the catfish sold well. Uh, they were about 10 feet long, uh, made of redwood. Heck of a lawn ornament. Uh, you know, they look like they're actually feeding right on the lawn there. I heard uh, an amusement uh, park in Missouri bought about 40 of them and made a, made a huge uh, catfish merry-go-round. <laughs> but uh, after about five years of making, he'd done so well with these, he had enough money to, uh, to buy himself a new chainsaw. Hey, that's great. I bet you that answers our lady viewer's question. Yeah, it's a, it's a good hobby, and uh, if the husband gets bored with it or something, uh, and he's still getting on her nerves, she can just, you know, use the chainsaw on him. Oh, no, no, Uncle Red, no. <laughs> he's kidding. Tell her you're kidding, Uncle Red. Don't say things like that. Tell her you're kidding. Well, whatever. He's kidding. <laughs> One of the things uh, Bill wanted to show you was uh, how you can survive in the forest uh, by fishing. Uh, even though you have no equipment, you can just find things around uh, that you can use. And the first thing he wants to show you is uh, how to do a little spear fishing. 
So what you're looking for is uh, some sort of a branch or a tree limb, or now that one's got too much of a curve. You're looking for something straight, and uh, that's got too many branches on it. Uh, not, oh no, that looks that looks better. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, that's smart. Ooh. Uh, he's okay. All right, all right. Don't forget to pull hard. Right. <laughs> so next thing he's got to sharpen the end there. And, oh, for God's sake! Check your knife. Always check your knife. For, see how the water refracts things? They look bent, and this is what you got to be careful of when you're spear fishing. Oh, <laughs> oh all right. Oh, okay. Well, that one was no, but it, you get the idea. Uh, so now Bill kind of has to allow for that angle when he when he when he goes for the fish, and I don't know what that does at all. He's, I think he's cool. There, I think he's got something. I think he's got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. Well, Bill's been doing this a long time. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> well, sometimes he knows what he's doing. Oh, okay. So give up on the spear fish, and they're going to try to make a fishing pole out of this. And the next thing he needs, he only needs a line. Now, Bill has an interesting approach. He, uh, he uses a thread right out of his clothes. Uh, and what he's going to do is, uh, I guess, put this onto the... Onto the oh, for God's sake. Uh, put that on the... Easy there, Bill. Easy, 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 easy. All right, all right. We're okay. And, uh, oh, look what he's doing here, kibitzing around. That won't work, because my clothes are stapled together. And he's going, oh, that Bill is a real kidder. But he's gathering up the thread, and I guess he did. That's probably enough, Bill, don't you think? Probably enough, Bill, Bill. Oh, All right, he's, uh, he winds that onto, onto the rod there. Now what he needs to do is uh, find some bait. So he's looking for, uh, I think he's looking for a worm here, looking under rocks and nothing there. Uh, what's this? Oh. oh, my God. I didn't know how long that was. Uh, was <laughs> Bill doesn't like uh, putting the worm on the hook, does he? Oh, God. <laughs> well, anyway, he's all set. And in he goes, throws a bait into the water, and uh, he's in. Look at that, and there's a man. Oh, geez, he's got one. He's got something there. He's got something. Oh, he's a go. Oh, he's a stay there. Oh, wow, it's putting up a fight. This is a good one. This is a good one. Oh, this is great. This is great. I like that look with the pants rolled up. Be careful now, Bill. Be careful. Hold this. <laughs> He's all right, and he hauls her in. It's a big one. He's got, wait a minute. Oh, for God's sake. I'll fit the van, and he makes us eat whatever he catches. But he's uh, happy to share. More than happy to share, I think. <laughs> eat it, he says. It is winter. A little voice says, me, me. You're out of windshield wiper fluid again. <laughs> Uh, at this point, I'd like to bring the show to, uh, to a complete halt and uh, give Harold a chance to say a few words. Harold, <coughs> the floor is yours. Don't mess it up. <laughs> okay, um, music videos, right? Okay, a lot of so-called educators, and a lot of so-called experts, and a lot of so-called parents think that there's too much violence and too much sex on, in music videos. Well, I would like to say to them, you know, if, if I could say to them, they're not here, but I'm saying to them, if, if they could hear this, no. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Uh, I agree. I agree that there's too much violence in videos, and granted, that will not make me popular with a lot of teenagers. But I'm not popular with them now. So, like, I care or something. Yeah, I take a minute out of my busy day and make me care. Or I don't. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, as far as too much sex uh, in videos goes, I'd just like to think that. Well, this is my opinion, and you're welcome to share it. Um, that I think there's no such thing as too much sex. <laughs> there's, there's that terrible, terrible thing called too little sex. Believe me, I know. It's horrible. <laughs> but music is, like, all about love and romance, right? And, well, love and romance is all leading up to sex, right? And nobody objects when they play the song, uh, Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree. Well, I object. It's a stupid song. <laughs> I like the message, though. <laughs> I haven't forgotten the story about uh, Stinky Peterson and Old Man Sedgwick, so stay tuned.
You can see why it's so hard for me to make this show entertaining. <laughs> Um, why don't we try hitting the ball? I got a bat here, and uh, would you like to uh, would you like to hit, or would you like to pitch on that? Could I hit? Would you, no, I'm, no, I'm saying is, uh, would you like to hit the ball? Or would you like to pitch? Hit the ball. You ever tried pitching? It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I'll tell you what we'll do. You know, um, why don't we flip a coin? And then, uh, however that goes, we'll decide who hits and, and who pitches. Okay? So you call it in the air. Okay? Heads. No. All right, so, you know, it's kind of a kind of a lesson in life, I think, for the youngsters. Just see that things don't always go the way you want them to go. It's a give and take. I have a bit, Dave. I'm going to pitch to myself now, because otherwise, he's never going to give me anything to hit. All right, baby, ready? Now, get under it. Where's your helmet? Oh, never mind. Okay, here we go. Just a nice soft one. You come and get that, Dave? Uh, the thing is here that it was a kid, they got the energy, they don't know what to do with it. I say to them, come on out and play with me, and then your energy will get used, play with me. Okay, Dave. You all set? Yep. You look kind of tired. All right. <laughs> now, the thing is there that, uh, God, he gets out, he gets some fresh air, he gets some exercise, the legs are getting moved around. Mind you, you know, I'm getting kind of old for this, man. Anyway, I get to spend some time with the young fella, and he gets to learn uh, what growing up is all about. So, anyway, uh, Stinky Peterson kept playing practical jokes on old man Sedgwick the whole evening, but you know, the old guy never got riled. I mean, even after dinner there, where he was scraping the shaving cream off of his pie, uh, he said to Stinky, you know, Stinky, if you want to grow old gracefully, uh, you got to find a way to just accept life and not get upset about pranks, you know. And Stinky was still mulling that over uh, when he went to bed and then found out that his sheets and his mattress had been Frenched. But he didn't really notice that because his pajamas were so full of itching powder, you know, and then of course the bed collapsed and he went right down through the cutaway floorboards, bounced off the Naugahyde recliner out through the front window and head first into the septic tank. And the old man Cedric yelled down to the septic tank, oh yeah, revenge is good too. And I live and learn. And the doctors say you will. Anyway, uh, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home and I'm bringing another bunch of flowers tonight. Uh, uh, I do this a few times a year because I'm really not too sure when our anniversary is and this way everybody wins. <laughs> so, thanks for watching the show and until next time, on behalf of myself and uh, Harold over here uh, and the whole gang up in the lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Smoke on the wall. Staying alive, staying alive. Ooh, 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 ooh. Na 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 na